Hello again. Welcome to Food for Life, where the food isn't just for the belly. My name is Jennifer Shepler, and today's topic is bullies. First, let's do some housekeeping. I'm not a professional. I'm only a professional in my own life. I'm not a counselor, although I like to counsel people. And so that, with that being said, everything you hear is pretty much my opinion and my perspective from the challenges of life that I went through. And so I'm here to share that with you and hopes to give you a different perspective. So also that means I may make a mistake. I'm not perfect. I am human. I may blurt out something that may not make sense or really good at mispronunciations or all that jazz, everything that people do in life that isn't perfect, I'm going to let you know right now that's me. <laughs> so I appreciate your forgiveness uh, in these challenges. And so let's get busy to our topic, bullies. My guess is going to be yes for most of you, but there are some out there who have never experienced this. Have you been a bully yourself or and have you been bullied? So yes. For my my answer would be a, a shout out yes, and I've had several in my life, but I'm learning to persevere through that, which will be another topic. Persevere, and life's pretty good as far as the bully program. <laughs> so, I'll give you a little story. Back in high school, um, I kind of pretty much you know, just kept to myself really and did what I was supposed to do and did my homework and all that. I wasn't an, an A student. I was more like a C student. Um, that's, I think that's pretty good considering <clears throat> not a lot of education in my background. So I did what I did the best that I could. And so there was one girl though, who always, she would say, I'm going to kick your ass. And like, I've never met her before. She's never introduced me. I didn't know her friends. You know, they were the ones who would hang out after school and smoke cigarettes. And I was not into that group. I was mainly with the nerds, <laughs> um, just doing my own thing, paying attention to my own life. So I didn't really know what I did to her for her to say that to me. And it really gave me a lot of strife like I was constantly dodging the hallway and when I'd see her I'd go down another hall or you know I always had anxiety around her and luckily for me I was always a track runner and I ran sprints so I knew that she would never get a hold of me after school because I would be lying at home so as soon as that doorbell ran, I was out the door and I ran home. There was no chance for anybody to, to trap me in any situation to where I would get my butt kicked. I wasn't about to let her, so I avoided her. She probably did this for a good year, and I didn't know any of her friends. So we finally graduate, and I just had my baby my first daughter. And then, um, I get on the bus because that was my mode of transportation back then. And guess what? She ends up on the bus and I'm like holding my daughter because she's still a baby. You know, she's in my arms. She's probably not more than a few months old and I'm holding her tight and I'm thinking, Oh no, no, oh, no, oh, no. What am I going to do? Like I'm, I'm kind of freaking out. And she walks up to me and she's looking at me and I'm like anticipating what she's going to say and out comes her mouth, something I totally unexpectedly hear. She says, I am so sorry that I treated you that way in school. I don't know why I did that to you. I didn't even know you and I'm sorry. That was really cool. That was like oh, a sigh of relief. And I realized that she had grown up a little bit since high school. And that gave me a sense of hope that 
okay, good. One, I didn't do anything that I didn't think I did. So she kind of helped me with that. And I gained a lot of respect for her that day. And it was a really good thing to hear. So comment below if you actually had a bully from your past come up to you and apologize. I mean, that is a breakthrough. Um, another situation happened fast forward in college. Okay, so there is two parts to this story. There's my part and then there's her part. In the beginning, we just didn't really connect. There was, you know, a distance, I guess you can say. We didn't really become instant friends or anything like that. We just tolerated each other, I guess you could say. There was no drive to bring us together. And one day I was having not a great day. I got frustrated a lot in school, something that's always been in my past, or at least it used to be, not anymore. And so I made a black hearted comment, which was not nice to do. Okay. I won't explain what the comment was, but it wasn't very nice. So the day goes on and this is a shorter version. Okay. This is the longer versions in my book that's coming out. So the teacher comes in and she's devastated and none of us know what's going on. And Time goes on during this day, and I'm consolidating with her, letting her know, like, I'm so sorry you're feeling down, and I hope that things improve for you, and I know that you're our teacher, but I just want to let you know that we care about you, and we hope you have a better day. And so later that afternoon... I'm getting odd looks from all kinds of people at school, people I don't know. I've gotten ostracized, like people wouldn't talk to me. And I'm like, what did I do? So long story short, the moment that I made a comment, there was somebody on the other side of the wall who was eavesdropping on our conversation between me and two other students that were working together. And this girl who was hiding decided to go and play with my words and start a vicious rumor about a teacher. And so that's what ended up happening. I learned real quick that uh, rumors, rumors do travel fast and we've got to watch what we say. So I ended up having to admit my comment to the higher um, authority of the school so that they could understand that what they think they heard was not true. So I had to be bold and be frank and be honest with the comment that I said. <clears throat> then I had to go and write a letter to the teacher and explaining the situation and what my part was and what my part wasn't. And then of course I had to get a witness who knew exactly what happened. And because of that witness, and I know that was God, I give him the full credit that I had a witness that day. She was the one who was able to make things right. And then people started relaxing and then I did my apologies. I made amends with everybody. And so that's what ended up happening. I made a black hearted comment and my bully pulled a black hearted attitude maybe. So I don't know why she chose to do that, but in the end who she really hurt, it wasn't me. She hurt the teacher. And so that is one of the biggest things that we have to be careful when we get attacked by a bully. Uh, it's never usually about us. The bully is the one who has issues in their heart. And then some um, will, will do whatever they can to get some attention or release some of the tension that they have inside their hearts because at home, 
they can't bring out their voice. They can't say anything. They're stuck. So when they leave that, that spot of where their demise is, they come into another, uh, another situation and they use what they can to feel better. So, you know, bullies are the ones who really need to be prayed for. And I know that a lot of people are going to go, well, what are you talking about? You know, it's not an eye for an eye. You know, when we bully somebody, we're hurting more than just the one person that that bully thinks that they're hurting. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a little bit of a raspy voice today. So bullies really are people who are hurting, who don't know how to express their anger or their frustration, so they take it out on other people. And so that's where I think bullies need to be um, hugged a little bit more. Um, so here's what Jesus has to say about bullies. The first one is Proverbs uh, chapter 6, verse 16 to 19. And it says here, there are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are ad 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 abomination. There's a word I can't say to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that, that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, one who sows discord among brothers. That's exactly what that bully did to me in college. Now, the first bully in high school wasn't so bad. She never really did anything to me. She only just said it. So I came to terms later that maybe she was jealous about something. Maybe she was jealous because I ran track. I don't know. Maybe I had nice hair. I don't know. But whatever her reason was, was her reason. And she saw that and apologized to me. And my respect just grew for her. Now, the college gal, it wasn't so easy. It was a little bit more challenging for me. I had to step and think about what is wrong with her life. And I had to pray for her. You know how hard that was? To pray for somebody who did you wrong, that's a, a big challenge for a lot of people. But really, that's what it was. Like, I don't know. She may have chosen me because I was in a negative time in my life where I was feeling down. And a bully looks for somebody who is worse off than they are so that their plan is successful. So if I had been a positive person, I doubt she would have chosen me. It just so happened to be that my life wasn't doing great either. And I really believe that that's where bullies come from. They look for the smaller, the smaller dough and attacks so that their, their mission is a success. <clears throat> and then the second um, verse, what God says about bullying, is in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as good for building up as it fits the occasion, that it might give grace to those who heal. God gave me grace because he was able to give me strength to, one, apologize for making that comment. So I had to apologize. And then I had to humble myself and realize what my part was where I was wrong, and I had to make it right. Then I had to find my voice and to go speak to that bully and let her know how I felt. I said, how dare you hurt somebody else when you really wanted to hurt me? And it really made her think. I don't think she realized the damage that she had done to that teacher regardless of what the effects would have done to me. And I, I'm sure because she was really quiet and then she ended up, you know, profanity towards me, which tells me that I had stirred something up in her that was truth and she didn't know how to react. So she, all she could do really was, you know, to just speak out what she felt. But, you know, I learned a little bit of integrity that day and I learned that, we have to be careful with our words with people. 
not only sometimes when we're frustrated, we, we say things that really we don't realize what we're doing or who could be listening or who might be the one to turn things around and then make everything devastating. So I had to learn a little bit about myself, about bullying, about rumors, like, holy, I learned a lot that day. So with that, there are people that are the bully themselves, and then you've got some that are the bystanders. Are you watching a bully attack somebody and then not doing anything about it? So you got to kind of think about, well, why would I watch that? Maybe it's a friend doing the bullying and you're worried about losing that friendship. But maybe something to think about is, do you really want a friend who does bullying? You know, or do you want a friend that you know causes gossip or causes strife between people? That's something to think about. So we have to be careful with what we say to ourselves, too, because bullying ourselves is just as bad. Uh, that's a blackened heart. So in order to be able to thrive with a better heart, we got to look to Jesus and ask him to help us and show us what we are doing wrong and what can we do to make it right. And he will be there to share that with us. He will tell us, this is what you did wrong and this is what you can do to help fix it. This is why we need Jesus in our life because we can't fix nothing on our own. We think we can, but he knows more than what we know. So it's important to be wise and seek the knowledge and wisdom that Jesus has for us so that we can put the bullying into some sort of control. That includes if you know a bully, reach out to them, be their friend, not the person you're pointing fingers at or wishing that they'd go to hell. I know people who've done that. So we have to be the, the higher ones and reach up to that bully and allow them to talk about hard things. Be their friend and pray for them. And that's what they need. Just like everyone else in the world, we all need that prayer. And eventually when we learn to look into other people's shoes, that's when our hearts become a little bit warmer and become more pink than black. So with that, peace be with you. Oh, almost left without doing our, our um, encouragement of the day. So like and share if you enjoyed this topic and tag somebody who you feel may this may apply to. Maybe you know a friend who's getting bullied. Maybe you are the bullier. So that'll give you something to think about. So, you know, I'm just randomly picking here because I've noticed a few times I've picked one that was like right on subject. So now you know that I dug in the bottom see if this one happens to pertain to today's video. Oh, I grabbed two. So I guess this is the chosen one. So God's motivation for you today is from Psalm 46, 1 through 3. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come, the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. So what he's basically saying is, let things roll off your shoulder. Ask him for guidance. Ask him to what to do next. And he will pave the path for you. And, you know, just recently I asked uh, Jesus to help me out with some drama at a particular place that I attend quite often quite often uh, involving bullies and I have not had one incident since then and it's been well over a month so trust and have faith that he will help you get through your bullying phases or help somebody who is a bully or who was talk to people show your love show your acceptance and then you will see hope have a blessed week and see you next time.